Hi, this video has to do with the OBD car code P0171, which is the uh, system 2 lean trouble code, and turning on the check engine light and a possible fuel injection cleaning as a solution for this. Hi, so I wanted to clarify the overall purpose of this video rather than have people get lost in the weeds with all the OBD auto doctor data that this video contains. The point of this video is that uh, I had a 2015 Malibu with 78,000 miles on it. And after fuel injection cleaning, the check engine light was still on because the long-term fuel trim was still high. It was around 20 to 25 or more, causing the check engine light to go on at that point. And after I added um, Shell gasoline 87 octane and had a full tank of that, within a short period of time, the long-term fuel trim went down far enough, like around 18, 19 or so, in order to turn off the check engine light. So it was either that or replace a whole set of fuel injectors because I had a fuel injector uh, sticking problem with at least three out of four fuel injectors on the Malibu. So this video indicates that really you don't need to replace the entire set of fuel injectors if some of them are sticking. If you have high mileage, you do a fuel injection cleaning, and if you use a good quality gas, you can usually allow the check engine light to go off because the uh, fuel injectors and the, uh, the uh, long-term fuel trim will be low enough so that the check engine light won't come on. Even though it may not be close to zero, it'll be somewhere under 20, hopefully, and the check engine light will be off at that point. So that's what the overall video is about. I just didn't want to have people get caught up in the weeds too much to, to not understand that. So enjoy the rest of the video. I'll put all the references that I specify in this video down in the uh, video description so that you have links for all of this. But I'll be using the uh, VGate iCar2 OBD2 scanner interface, which is a Wi-Fi interface that goes into the maintenance port of the car, along with the OBD Auto Doctor app to uh, analyze the car's engine. This adapter was well reviewed. Typically the price runs between like 20 to 22, 23 dollars. Comes in a white box that's shown here. It has three LEDs. The red LED is a power indicator. There's a green LED which is the OBD indicator, meaning it's active. And a blue indicator is the Wi-Fi indicator. It also has what's known as a power saving technology. It has a little red symbol there that you push to uh, restart it without removing it from the port in case it's in the port for 30 minutes or more in order to protect the vehicle battery it turns itself off and then you can hit that little red indicator or a little red button there to turn it back on again. And there's a shot of the back side showing all the pins that you plug into the maintenance port. It comes with a little instruction package showed here and uh, a little CD, which um, you're able to put into your, your PC and read that. I didn't find the CD very informative. It had a lot of sort of a, a mixture of Chinese and English in there and stuff like that. So that wasn't really very, very informative. But the uh, instruction package has uh, some interesting information. The instruction sheet has uh, a variety of stuff. It has a couple of QR codes in order to get the free version of the OBD Auto Doctor app for both uh, uh, iPhone and Android. The free version only has limited capability. It doesn't even let you reset the trouble codes, but you can take a look at some uh, engine parameters with a free version. It also has um, information there on um, installing the o uh, OBD app on your phone or iPad, on uh, pairing Wi-Fi to your, your um, Android device or iPhone or um, iPad, whatever it may be as well as uh, a list of some of the common trouble codes. The Auto Doctor website itself gives you three different price structures for their um, uh, app. The Express version, Standard version, and Business version. I bought the uh, Standard version for $59.95. It's a one-time charge. It's not licensed every year. So you just pay once and then you can use it indefinitely. It contains all of the um, engine parameters that I wanted to use. It enables you to reset the trouble codes and take a look at, at uh, everything that the um, uh, engine computer is uh, generating for you. Okay, now let's get to analyzing the engine. 
This is a 2015 Chevy Malibu 2.5 liter dual overhead cam direct injection with variable valve timing and variable valve lift. And the mileage is about 78,000. Okay, the first step, plug in the V-Gate adapter right here. Download the OBD Auto Doctor app to whatever device you're using. I'm using a laptop. Connect to the adapter Wi-Fi. In this case, it's called V-Link for the adapter I'm using. If you pull down the open connection uh, pop-up here, and for the Wi-Fi, the IP address is 192.168.0.10 and port 35000. This is the information that's given in the V-Link data sheets. And um, this is also a unsecure Wi-Fi connection but uh, you're not putting in a password or anything for the OBD Auto Doctor, so there shouldn't be an issue with that. Bring up the OBD Auto Doctor and then do a quick connect to the Wi-Fi, like I'm doing here. It gives you the option to create a vehicle profile if you want. That's what this pop-up is. I typically click No here. Here's an example of clearing the trouble code once you fix the problem on the car. In order to clear the trouble code, what you do is, is uh, make sure the engine is off but that the key is in the on position. And then you go to the clear trouble code button, clear it, and then restart the engine and then verify the check engine light is off, which it should be. Okay, now we're going to go into looking at some of the data on the OBD Auto Doctor. Originally, the check engine light came on after about 78,000 miles, and I didn't have a fuel injection cleaning done yet on the car. And it, it came up with code P0171, which is that lean long-term fuel trim error. So the engine was running lean, and the engine computer was attempting to, to uh, enrich in the fuel mixture at that point. So... Um, the uh, long-term fuel trim at that point was up to around like 35 or so, which is way too high because typically it should be, you know, ideally around zero. But with the car being as old as it is, typically it was like around 15 or 19 or something like that. But since it was running high, I thought I'd get a fuel injection cleaning. And uh, these are some of the values that uh, came out of all that. Okay, I'll go over the definition of some of this data, even though I think most people that are watching this video probably know what most of this stuff is. But the uh, short-term fuel trim is the uh, attempt by the engine computer to constantly readjust the, uh, the uh, richness or leanness of the uh, air and fuel mixture as time goes by. Typically, it should be like between minus 10 to 10, that type of thing. So the result here is pretty high overall. It was going between about 0 to 15 or so, even after the... Uh, uh, fuel injector work was done. This is uh, a graph of the capture after the fuel injection work at about 2500 RPM. That's on the uh, upper left. Then on the upper right is the uh, fuel pressure gauge reading. Actually this is in kilopascals. And uh, one kilopascal is uh, about 0.145 PSI, so this corresponds to about 58 PSI, which is uh, pretty well normal for the Malibu. I had the fuel uh, pump replaced some time ago because it had its own problems uh, at, at that point in time so it's running pretty well at nominal value here. The airflow rate for the mass airflow sensor in the lower left uh, runs from about like 3 to uh, 8 to 10 or so depending on um, how far or how fast you're going and typically the nominal rates there are like from like 3 to 7 or 3 to 10 on an average depending on how you're accelerating so this is within range here. That long-term fuel trim on the lower right uh, for 2,500 RPM, uh, started out at about 15 or so, and then wound up to going oh around uh, 12 or so on this particular graph. So typically, that isn't going to turn on the uh, uh, check engine light or give you a code at this point. The uh, long-term fuel trim values that get up around 20 to 25 percent usually set either P0171 or P0174 lean code. And long-term uh, fuel trim values that drop down to negative 20 to 25 will usually set P0172 or P0175 rich code. After the code is set, then the check engine light comes on. 
See now here, this is the first oxygen sensor reading going between mainly 0.1 to 0.8 volts. When it's low at 0.1, you have a lean exhaust detected. When it's high at 0.8 or a little higher, it's a rich exhaust detected. And typically, it should be an even sine wave pattern going back and forth. But the fact that it's jagged in places indicates that it's it's not detecting an, an, a lean to rich uh, oscillation at an even pattern going back and forth. So uh, a little bit later on, it was determined that actually I had three out of four fuel injectors that were sticking that um, could have been the cause of this problem as well. So I, I thought I'd just put this in for additional analysis. The uh, second oxygen sensor uh, was even at uh, its voltage, which I think was like 0.75 volts at the time. But uh, this first oxygen sensor seemed a little uh, suspect in what it was reading. Eventually, the situation got worse even after the fuel injection cleaning. The check engine light came on, and the long-term fuel trim uh, showed a much higher reading, as indicated here. These readings are at idle and also at 2500 RPM. You can see here the long-term fuel trim is about 30 or so, so that's way too high. Finally, the check engine light went off again after I filled the gas tank with 87 octane shell gasoline. And uh, even though the long-term fuel trim isn't uh, real low, typically it's below 25 when I'm at like 2200 or 2500 RPM. Now this is at idle here, then I rev it a little bit and then eventually move it up to about 2200 RPM. You can see it stays at about 20 or 22 for the long-term fuel trim at uh, like 2200 RPM and then it'll jump up to like around 28 or so when I'm at idle. And taking a look at the first oxygen sensor, you can see that the sine wave is a lot more even than it was before, going between 0.1 to 0.8 volts or so. And the uh, second oxygen sensor reading is that other green line up at around 0.75 or so. It kind of mirrors the original oxygen sensor in a sine wave pattern. It gets even out a little bit. But this is a the sine wave is a, at least a little bit more even than the other jagged oxygen sensor sine wave that we saw before.
So that's about it for this video. Even though I'm not pushing one type of gasoline over another, I'm just saying that uh, the cleaning qualities and the type of gas I use, that shell gas at 87 octane, appeared to keep the long-term fuel trim down low enough so that the check engine light didn't come on. And um, it's been that way for quite a number of days now. So it's just something to keep in mind instead of having to replace an entire set of fuel injectors in case some of them are sticking. So that's it for this video. Have a good day now.